Every year, thousands of children are excited to receive a spirograph as a gift. But that excitement quickly fades when they try to use it because instead of an attractive design like this, they start drawing, the gears separate, and the line skips. Or the inner gear jumps up and over the outer gear and you get another skip in the pattern. Or the opposite, where the inner gear actually digs under the outer gear, creating another skip. This video will explain how to avoid skips like that that can ruin an image, and also offer suggestions that will make using a spirograph a lot easier and a lot more fun. Let's get started. The most common cause of a skip is the two gears coming out of mesh. The reason this happens, and this happens mostly when you're using the outer uh, holes, is that there is a connection between your eye and the way your hand is moving. So as you're going around, when you come down to this point, your eye is naturally looking at what's being drawn. And the line is going to be going like this, and yet, to keep the gears in place, you have to be pushing this way towards this contact point. So the first hint to avoid this type of skip is don't watch the pen point. Watch the contact point as the gears rotate around. You do this and you'll greatly reduce the number of gears coming out of mesh. Another useful technique is to use your offhand to Help the gear move around and keep it in place. Sometimes this off finger, when I'm drawing, will provide over half of the rotational force to uh, cause this gear to move. The second most common source of skips is the gear, inner gear, actually coming out and climbing up and over the, uh, the stationary gear. And the reason this happens is, uh, first of all, your pen might not be perpendicular. If it's angled like this and you're pushing, you're actually creating an up force here that can force the, uh, the gear up and over the, uh, the stationary gear. Uh, this is a big problem if you press too hard. The key to the spirograph, one of the important keys, no matter what type of image you're drawing, is to use very light pressure. It takes very little pressure to make it go around. If you press hard, you're increasing the forces that are likely to cause a gear to pop out of place. The lighter pressure you use, the uh, less that's likely to happen. The gears want to stay meshed. You don't have to push the gears in very hard to keep them meshed. And almost as important as using light pressure is to go slowly. Don't try to race around the, uh, the gears. Uh, this is a problem for young children because they're impatient. Uh, but the slower you go, as long as it doesn't cause the ink to bleed out and cause blotches like that, the more control you'll have and the fewer skips you'll get. In addition to using light pressure with the pen, it's important to know that you have the gears with the right side up, the correct side up. If you look at the holes carefully, you'll see that they're not straight holes. They're actually funnel shaped. And the problem with that is, is uh, if you get it upside down so that the small hole is on the top and the large one's on the bottom, when you are trying to press the, uh, the inner gear against the outer gear. If you press too hard, and especially if you don't have a perpendicular pen, if it's angled like this, it creates a lot of up thrust because the angle of the, um, the cone is working with the uh, non-perpendicular gear and uh, uh, non-perpendicular pen, and this can create a lot of problems. So make sure that your uh, gears are right side up, that is with the large hole facing up, and uh, you'll avoid this problem. Follow those suggestions and you'll have very few skips. But occasionally, even when you know how to do everything right, you forget to do it. 
One of the things you can add to a spiral graph that will eliminate the problem of the disc popping up and over the, uh, the edge of the stationary um, gear is to cut out of thin plastic, moderately stiff, uh, a ring that is just about the same diameter, this one's a little bit large, as the inside diameter of the teeth. What that does is it creates a lip so that this inner gear can't pop up and over. It's actually held in place. You don't want it any uh, further in than the tip of the teeth. Otherwise, when you go to use these uh, outside holes, the diameter of the pen will hit that and uh, it'll cause a, a, a small bump. Here's one I've done. And I've colored in the teeth so you can see it. And the ring just goes right to the end of the teeth. It's held in place with some of the uh, uh, putty that comes with the spirograph. And it works really well. Another thing you can use is um, that foam mounting tape, which actually works better than this putty. A very rare source of skipping is that the inner gear will actually slide under the stationary gear like that and you get a skip. Uh, this can happen if you're using too much pressure it actually pushes it underneath. If the putty has not been pressed down tight and flush uh, it can leave a little gap there but even if it has uh, one of the problems with the putty system is it doesn't secure the paper to the underneath surface so that if you're pressing hard uh, the uh, paper can flex downward like this and create a gap that the uh, the gear can go into. This is a, a rare instance but if you've put in 15 or 20 minutes on a complex design you don't want to have it ruined by a rare instance and it can happen. So what I recommend is again use light pressure make sure this is uh, firmly secured but actually something that works so well I've completely done away with the putty or even pins that used to come with the original kit. This is something that makes the spiral graph much easier to use and a lot more convenient, especially changing the paper. I went to the hardware store and I got a thin sheet of galvanized steel. It was only about five dollars. Then from their uh, um, hardware uh, section I got some of these neodymium or rare earth magnets which are very strong. Instead of the putty or pins, I just use two of these, like that, and it's done. It holds it very securely, it's, they're easy to remove, and eliminates a problem with the putty. With the putty, when you go to remove the, um, the, the fixed ring, what can happen is you're, you're pulling it up like this, the putty's stuck to the paper, and the paper can get wrinkled and uh, creased just from the process of trying to pull away from the putty. Sometimes also the putty sticks to the paper so firmly that it will actually shred the paper, tear it as it's pulled away. With the uh, magnet system like this, there's no problems. It holds it very securely. Uh, you can add as many as you want, but I have found Two are more than enough. There's another interesting um, thing about this system is that you can be drawing away and if you want to make a change to the drawing by moving the outer ring it's very easy to do now. You just slide it. The magnets still hold but you can slide this around to make modifications to your drawing. Now this is uh, potentially very useful to high-end spirograph artists because they're always looking for new and innovative ways to create new drawings. So uh, I offer this, I have used this, I found it works better than any other securing system. And the nice thing is, is it clamps both the fixed ring, uh, fixed gear, and the paper firmly to the writing surface. One of the problems with the spiral graph is that all of the gears are clear plastic and you're using them on a white background. It can be very difficult to see 
where the teeth are, and that's critical if you're doing a complicated structure where you go around once and then you move this uh, just a couple of teeth over and you go around again. What I do to make sure that I can see the gears and uh, it actually makes it more enjoyable to use is I color the top sides of the gears. I always use black for the stationary gear and blue or some other contrasting color for the um, uh, the moving gear. And what I find is this makes it much easier to track the progress and keep my focus on the contact point. It also makes it more fun because you can see the gears doing their job. They're probably too faint to see, but all spiral graph gears comes with um, indexing marks, little raised ridges, which are used to line up the holes with the teeth on uh, the gears. I have a big problem with this because in every gear I've checked these lines do not line up with either a valley or the top of the gear. They're kind of halfway in between and it varies somewhat so that these are not a reliable source of lining things up. What I prefer to do is take a permanent marker and make an arrow pointing right towards the tip of uh, my start point uh, uh, gear tooth. Then if I have to, for example, go once around and then move this over, every time I move it over, say two or three gears, I make a little line and that'll tell me where my last go around started. I find this helps a lot and uh, ends the confusion of trying to line up a, a, a tooth with a hole when the indexing marks make that impossible. I've saved my last suggestion for the end because I think it's the most important, the most valuable. No matter how careful I am, I always have a skip or two, especially in a complex design where you're changing pens and maybe changing gears and moving gears around. And uh, some of these can take 15-20 minutes to produce and one minute from the end you accidentally let something go, you get a line and uh, it's ruined, or so you think. There is a way to save it, even if this line is intersecting other colors, other lines that have already gone down. The key to that are correction strips or correction tabs. These are little sheets of acetate that have a white correction uh, film on the back. And uh, what you can do and I find the pencil works best, is that if you have this line here and you uh, place the uh, correction tape on top of it and then rub this out, uh, you can eliminate that line. Then if you've also eliminated some of the, uh, the good lines, the colored lines that this crossed, then you can go back with your pen, uh, the correct colors, and just hand clean it up. The key to using this, though, is to not put it down and color a whole area. You want to color as little as possible. So for a line like this, you line it up and just lightly rub it. You may have to come back a couple times until it's completely gone. But uh, you can see how it's fading. Now I'm having a problem here because every time I push it in, the edge is pushing off some of the correction tape. Now you don't want to use um, uh, the liquid paper products. They leave too high a mound and uh, uh, they take too long to dry. This stuff is instantaneous. But uh, if you use this, you can easily save 20 minutes work. And uh, it really works well. It's surprising. For example, this image that I showed early on uh, actually has four skips in it. Uh, one happened uh, about a third of the way through, two halfway through, and one right at the end. And I was able to erase them using the 
uh, correction tape and you can get this at stationary stores some people still use typewriters so and that's what this is made for correcting uh, mistakes on manual typewriters I was able to eliminate the lines and then go back with the correct color and uh, fill in where the mistakes were and it's really effective uh, so if you uh, like doing spiral graphs, I hope you found that some of these suggestions will help you enjoy using it a lot better and produce better images. And uh, as always, thank you for watching.